Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. How are we getting on? Welcome to a brand new Fallout 76 camp. So, I have wanted to do this one ever since the Vintage Camp has initially appeared on the Season 17 scoreboard, but frankly even longer than that really, because there's a lot of rusted ruined campers all over the Appalachian landscape that I've always wanted to have the option to build with, and these are a little bit smaller, but they don't have the wheel arch inside, so that's also a win. Yeah, definitely happy with these, they're really really cool style, they're nice and placeable, a couple of cool options with them, and I'm glad to get to build this. So yeah, if you're watching this on down the line and Season 17 has been and gone, then there's a very good chance that they will appear on the Atomic Shop at some point, so uh, keep an eye on that, because there's a few things to watch out for there. But for now, let's have a look at where we are on the map. So here we go, just down on the edge of Skyline Valley. It's a camper, it's a campsite. Eh, National Park seems like a sensible place to go. And I've gone down by the creek over here on the western side of the area, and we're just up from the Naked Creek campsite there. There's a couple of flat spots, and I really did need a flat spot for this build. But uh, this sort of spot sort of rises up the cliff a little bit. There's a couple of cool places here, and you could do a multi-tiered kind of thing if you wanted to. It's quite a good little uh, spot I found, this one. I quite like it. But for now, we are just going to drop the camper in to kick things off. And I do quite like this little corner for this, because it's compact, which goes well with the build. So we're going to tuck this up against the cliff edge. And we're going to have kind of three parts to this. There's obviously the main camper, there's going to be the space in front of it, and a space behind it as well. And uh, I'm trying to make sure this is placed to allow for all of that, whilst also having nice flat ground, because we are going to be placing workbenches direct on the earth, which is problematic if the ground is not flat enough. But here, fortunately, it's just about as uh, level as you could want. So that looks alright. We'll head around the back and start building out our crafting area. So this is quite a small object the camper there so we're gonna have to go bare minimum with the choices we make here so we've got the uh, weapons bench here which is um, the iron mountain forge one which is actually quite a large one really could have been two workbenches in one but still i quite like it it goes quite nicely for this and we've got the tinker's bench and there'll be a cooking station around the front as well that one tucks in quite nicely behind the wheel arch which does cause a little bit of an issue when it comes to placing other things and causes some issues around the other side we'll get back to that Something else that's causing an issue is, for some weird reason recently, the player character's collision seems to be uh, a bit more of a problem. It's kind of preventing me placing this workbench, but we worked around it. Kind of tuck it in towards that little flat bit at the back of the cliff there, and it'll enclose this space quite nicely. It works as like a nice little kind of cosy, enclosed crafty area that kind of works with the cliff as well, that kind of hangs over a little bit, and uh, I quite like the result there. So I'm going to drop this scrap box on the outside for now. I really like the design of that one, so I'm glad I could use it. Do wish we had a slightly plainer one in terms of the colours, but I like the shape. And we'll try and get this punch card machine in. Which, finding a spot for this where it looks like it belongs, took a minute. In the end, I settled with tucking it just behind the weapons bench here. Once it plays nicely, it'll kind of look more or less like it's meant to be there. Works quite well. I'm going to drop the ammo storage unit here, and uh, I've gone for the Pioneer Scouts one, because it's, to be honest, the least obnoxious one. The Unclave one kind of works, but everything else is a bit too colourful for that, so... I went for the Pioneer Scouts one, and I quite like it. Just about uh, does the job. kind of wish that thing was a bit smaller. We're going to carefully nudge the scrap box up against it, and sort of tie everything together. There you go, that looks alright. Add a few extra bits and pieces as well. So the tool chest has been a bit awkward. I definitely do want a scrap box or two around here. Stash box, rather. But uh, yeah, that just does not want a place, despite the fact it should do. So we're going to go with the old standby, which is to blueprint it. And uh, I've got that blueprint just named... Ah! Just because uh, that'll put it at the top of the list with it being alphabetical. If I call it temporary, which would be accurate, it'll be down the bottom, which would be very annoying. So I did want a little kind of cover over the top of the workbenches here. The tents are just too big, but um, I thought a little awning here might work. Again, this one sticks out a bit too far and of course covers up the window there on the right, so I was not quite happy with that. It looks good, but it's just too big, at least for this particular job. It sits a little too low as well. So I switched to the Helvetian one, which actually takes up a little less room, tucks in a little bit better. It's a bit of a problem there, but... Yeah, the range should more or less kind of run off that and avoid most of the workbench, mostly. <laughs> so, heading around the front, this 
sort of area gave me a lot of hassle. I chose this particular basic cooking station just because it, it kind of matches the overall vibe the best out of the, the options I have available. Over here, this is where the wheel arch really started to be a bit of an issue. I did think about using this bench, maybe a kind of slightly more beaten up one would have been a better choice, but either way, because of the wheel arch, it won't sit flush with the wall, and it just looks kind of... Um, I don't know what the word I'm looking for is, but it just doesn't quite work. It sticks out, it looks kind of half-cocked or something, um, and I wasn't happy with it at all. So uh, you see the problem that was being created there, and I ended up going for a solution that I quite liked in the moment. And sort of helped create the whole thing um, to look it like more of a cohesive finished planned structure, which I quite like the final result on. Makes the kind of front picture look a little better. So we'll drop that Radstag field dressing station in, because that's kind of relevant to the building of the whole thing up. And we'll get rid of this bench that didn't work and put in the firewood pile. Now this I wanted under the canopy, because you don't want your firewood getting rained on. So it tucked in quite nicely between the stairs and the wheel arch there. And from there, I was starting to sort of have a picture come together. So we'll grab this lawn chair and it flies up to the top because of course it does. So we'll blueprint that. And sitting next to the wood pile there, it gives us a nice kind of starting point to add little bits of decoration around and little splashes of color. that will actually come together as a nice kind of front view, as we saw earlier on. So there we are, blueprinted, it will stay put. And uh, we're kind of getting an idea coming together there a little bit, I think. So I'm going to jump up the cliff a little bit now and grab my solar panel and temporarily my uh, weather machine as well. But the solar panel is the main thing. And I'm putting this on the end here because it's going to kind of frame or bookend the whole front aspect, I suppose, of the camp quite nicely. And I'll play around with the objects I'm going to put at the other end of the camper as well, so that we end up with a kind of bookended edge to the image there as well, which I quite like the overall look with how this came together in the end. The weather control machine is just helpful really for having clear weather for the footage, but uh, as the evening's drawing in, let's jump on a bit. There we go. It's starting to look more homely, but we've got a way to go. I'm going to put a couple of bits of furniture inside now. First up, a bed. You can see I've blueprinted a bed with the chessboard displays on them so that we can just dive straight in and put some comfy pillows on there. There we go. Still need to merge these, but now that those are on, one click should do it. Definitely put the pillows on before you merge the chessboards in, otherwise you won't be able to activate them. There we go. Neat and tidy. We'll drop that in there. I did think about putting a bed on one of the sort of shelves at the end there, putting a sleeping bag and stuff in, but I wasn't really happy with the look. And I kind of wanted to go for something cosier, a bit more homely looking, and a little bit more permanent, that kind of vibe. So uh, chucking a sleeping bag on the end kind of doesn't go with that. Should probably put that rug in first, but one plus side to putting it in afterwards is, well, apart from the fact it fits, it means the bed doesn't have the tendency of floating, which it might have otherwise done. So it actually worked out quite well that way. And we'd still see the floor that kind of comes with the camper as well, so nice combo there. And I kind of put the key pieces of furniture in now, so that the whole thing gives that kind of um, idea of where we're going with it. And then we can sort of add the details in a moment. Get a weapon rack in there, because you definitely do want to have a weapon to hand if you're going to kip out in the wasteland. One thing I would definitely like to have even more than a weapon close to hand is a door on this camper. Unfortunately, we do not have one. Um, that's the one thing that I think they missed off, that there's a, a bit of a pity. This whole prefab is really, really cool. I like it a lot. But they don't have doors. Why don't we have doors? Uh, it feels incomplete for it. So, I'm going to drop that... Uh, magazine rack in the corner. I thought about putting this table in, but I basically decided I didn't really need one, because I've got the shelf at the end, and also it was going to block the doors to those non-functional cupboards at the end, which um, is not the end of the world with them not being functional, but it does look a little odd. You would, if it was a real camper, be using those to store things, so you'd want access, but at least some access. It's not completely avoidable, but uh, it did need doing. So out here, we're going to make a few more adjustments. I'm going to move this cooking station over towards the edge of the rocks here, and um, then we can sort of work on the book ending I mentioned earlier on the other side. 
but the ground is not quite flat here and we do need to sink the thing down a bit so we're going to drop a little mat onto the pressure plate there and then we can use the merge glitch just to sink this down a little bit further three pops on the uh, the merge glitch should do the job there and that should just allow us when the whole thing wants to actually play ball anyway there we go to uh, conceal that rug behind the rest of the cooking station up against the cliff edge and have it just look like it's it, like it belongs and the, the dirt has kind of blown up against it and it's been there a while so a little bit of careful placement and that should be good and also it doesn't get in the way as we sort of path around the side either which is a nice win so we could grab this portable toilet and i ended up playing around with this corner as i say quite a lot I actually ended up swapping this around with the field dressing station. So the field dressing station was right into the corner. And it kind of came together nicely, putting this on the end to kind of tie the whole thing together. But uh, this corner was definitely a bit of a head scratcher for a moment. However, that should give us the general vibe we're going for. Now I'm going to head off, especially as the evening is drawing in, and add a whole bunch of little details and a little bit more colour and bits and pieces and clutter and so on and so forth for quite a long time and uh, then we should be about ready to take a tour of this place so I will see you over there in just a moment yeah, not a bad view from here at all and here we go so I wanted to start off here over by this little footpath so you sort of see the way up towards the area because it's pretty cool it comes up from down by that little island in the creek and then as we start further out from the camp it's kind of small tucked out of the way, minding its own business, and uh, as we come up, we just creates this nice little homestead on the side of the cliff. I quite like it. Put the um, satellite dish on the top there, because it also kind of echoes the solar panel on the other end and helps tie the whole thing together, especially with the cliff kind of climbing up that side as well. It follows the line a little bit. Got my shelter entrance in over here, tucked behind some grass and some other bits of clutter and sort of debris and stuff that's built up because I'm probably going to need that shelter sooner or later. So it's kind of handy. There's a cooking station just sort of sitting there looking like it belongs. We have a nice, cosy, colourful, homely looking front view of the camper. I'm pretty chuffed with how it's come out. There we go. See, I tucked that uh, field dressing station right into the corner, added some flowers and stuff to give it a little bit more colour and uh, bookended it with that uh, portable toilet which comes together quite nicely I think. Thought about using the regular old outhouse but it's a little bit too beaten up and a little bit too ramshackle for this build so the, the portable toilet kind of goes a little better with it I think. Never mind the technical complications of how you keep it sanitary but anyway. Ducking under the canopy there I've put a few extra plants around sort of um, hanging baskets and the equivalent as well as those um, sort of coloured lights at the top which give it kind of nice welcoming vibe I think a little cosy seat there nice place to hang out gonna have to have that bug zapper I imagine that would be an absolute must and that's the mothman one which is slightly more beaten up than the other one which kind of goes with the the rusty camper a little bit we'll head on in so fairly basic in here. I can imagine you could kind of merge a cooking station or something in if you really wanted to take the time to do that. Probably be quite the challenge and need a lot of planning and stuff, but I think it could be done. For now, I'll put the TV in there, a whole load of bits and pieces around, and a coffee station as well. It's one of the uh, stash boxes in the corner there from the current scoreboard, season 17. It's quite nice. Do quite like that thing. Goes well with the camping vibe. And there we go, a kind of uh, little cosy, homey uh, space in the wasteland. A whole bunch of stuff on there from the Season 17, as well as a whole bunch of other older bits and pieces that I kind of like to add around, make this place feel a little bit more lived in. Got the uh, board games at the back there, and a pile of ammo as well, which is mildly annoying to pull stuff out of my ammo box so that I had the resources in my inventory, because unfortunately you can't craft from your ammo box. Or at least not those things, you actually have to have it on your person. But the actual requirements are pretty light, so it's not too bad. I do wish this place had a door, though. It's the one thing that would complete the overall vibe of it, and unfortunately it doesn't. Yeah. Oh well. 9 out of 10, I think, on that one, Bethesda. We'll pan around and uh, step past our little flamingos here and our Vault Boy sundial. I absolutely love that sundial. Kind of... Uh, when I remember it's there, definitely got to squeeze it into a build, which is 
I kind of forget it a bit more often than I'd like, but it is cool. So, making our way around the corner there. Got a little sign so people can find the market if they need to. My uh, player vending. But before we get to that, we've got a big flat bit of rock here on the cliff edge. That uh, felt like the perfect place to set up a little seating area. Something needed to be done here, so... It's a nice little place to kind of relax and unwind and admire the view of the super mutant camp, I suppose. But, uh, you know, we practice shooting as well. Don't miss and then attract the super mutants, hopefully, but not a bad spot. In the distance over there is also the uh, treehouse that I built on a couple of weeks ago. Which I shall try and remember to link to that video if you want to check it out. And in the meantime, here is our crafting area, which kind of came together. It's a nice kind of little enclosed space quite nicely. I think the collector on is maybe a little over the top, but it's kind of an essential if you're going to be here for any period of time, at least for me anyway, to have that Nika Cola collector on. My camp unit's tucked around the back there as well. There is my vendor on top of the radiation barrel. And um, yeah, it kind of blends in with everything else and looks like it's waiting to be broken down, that cash register. So I kind of like that it doesn't stick out too much. Well, it does make it harder for people to find it. So pros and cons, but. It's all about the aesthetics, isn't it? <laughs> Speaking of the aesthetics, I really like the look of this bench, and I hope we get more along those lines, but as I say, it should be weapons and armor, not just a weapons bench. Yeah, I do quite like how this little spot's come together. Everything you need for a little crafting area. No armor bench, obviously, and no power armor, but I could head down to the uh, shelter if I really need those. But um, the essentials, I use the weapons bench and the tinker's bench the most, so definitely had to make sure I had those. Yeah, I think this has come together to make a nice little kind of semi-permanent feeling place sort of up the cliffside here that I, I quite like. A couple of those tree stumps, by the way, are stash boxes from the current scoreboard as well, so do quite like that. Pretty happy on the whole with this camper and with the way I've managed to dress it up. I do like the um, survival tent as well, the uh, Fallout First Reward that is... Um, in a similar vein to this camper as well. That's definitely the best one available so far, so worth grabbing that if you haven't and you've got Fallout first. Yeah, hope you folks like that one. I am really quite pleased with how this came out. The view from here in particular is um, pretty much spot on. I really like the way it's, it looks, a little bit of colour, plenty of detail, everything kind of comes together as a nice uh, cohesive picture. So yeah, if you did like the video, please consider dropping subs and likes. I very much appreciate. Down below, got social media links. Particularly check out my Instagram and uh, channel memberships as well if you want to support the channel in that way. I very much appreciate. And if you get a chance to join us for live streams as well, we are playing Fallout 76, Fallout London, and a little bit of Stalker at the moment as well, which has been good fun. So I do hope you join us for those. But for now, thank you very much for watching. I look forward to speaking to you all very, very soon.